What's up everyone? Eli here. Uh, here to do a uh, tape collection video today. Um, I believe that I mentioned I was going to do that. I think I've mentioned it a couple times in the last couple weeks. And I tend to do things like that. I'll say I'm going to do this soon and then I don't. Not that anyone cares or, or was paying attention, but um, yeah, man. Um, so when I first started this channel, I did my tape collection videos. Uh, they, the quality turned out very poor. I've since deleted all of them. Um, the videos were fine. I, like, you know, I'm, I'm no better at doing this uh, now than I was when I first started. Just the, you know, the actual video quality was, was terrible. So I, I've, you know, long since deleted those videos. Um, I, I did a couple tape collection videos, um, kind of during when I was moving earlier this year. So they were, you know, I, I, they were all mixed up. They weren't alphabetized. And I thought that was fine at the time. I did like two tape videos, but I've deleted those two. Um, so I'm basically starting, starting new. Um, everything's all, you know, actually alphabetized and organized this time. And yeah, we'll just start, uh, starting the A's, uh, very, very, you know, beginning of my uh, tape collection a lot of these tapes are dubbed tapes so I just I'll show the J card and everything but I'm not gonna bother showing just like a blank clear or a blank white tape um, if they're not dubbed I'll show you but if they are I'll, I'll probably just skip that because we all know what a blank white tape or a blank black or clear tape looks like it's nothing uh, nothing special so anyways starting with this uh, tape that I got in trade earlier this year uh, I had been wanting something from this band, and it is fantastic. And everything I've heard from this band is fucking fantastic, I, I gotta say. Um, this came out on Iron Bonehead Records some years back. We have the Canadian black metal band AMSG with Anti-Cosmic Tyranny. I know that's some imagery that you know some of you are not going to be comfortable with. To me, it's art, and I'm not going to censor a band. Um they can do as they please. I really, really like this band and this album. Like I said, Iron Bonehead. I don't know exactly what year it came out, but, uh, you know, this band is fairly popular. They're fairly well known, at least, you know, in the underground black metal realm. Nice J card there. Um, and they're just, they're unique and really fucking good at what they do. Uh, this is the only thing I own from them, but I have heard stuff that they've done, you know, kind of over the years. And every time they put out an album, you know, it sounds unique and different than the one before. Uh, you know, they just, for me, they're doing things that most bands should be striving for, which is, which is, you know, not just repeating themselves and, you know, continuously perfecting their art. And that's, that's what AMSG do for me. And that's what I respect about them most. Uh, moving on. Next, we have a couple of uh, LLN bootlegs. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with the LLN scene, you know, Lay Legion Noirs or Black Legions. Um, it was a black metal scene uh, in France from in, you know, the early, mid-90s. Um, it was a... If you're not familiar at all, it was a collective of people, um, maybe 15 to 20 dudes, I don't know exactly, and they had, you know, they had this scene where they, um, I mean, I'm not, I won't go into it too deeply. Uh, I'm not an expert, but if I were to do more research, I think a, a Black Legion's video would be, would be pretty cool. But anyways, it was a collective of people, um, you know, maybe... I don't know, 15 or so bands slash projects, um, very incestuous. You know, there were like 15 or 20 different dudes. Most of them were in each other's bands. Um, a recent example of something like this would be, you know, the Black Twilight Circle out of California. And that was basically directly inspired from, from the Black Legions. Um, very, some of it was kind of your, you know, your straightforward black metal. Um, but a lot of it was very experimental very experimental, very, some of it to me sounded very like Abruptum-esque. Um, I've never read any interviews with any of these guys or anything, but some of these projects had to have been directly inspired by Abruptum. Um, some of it's not even metal. Some of it's, uh, some of it was, was like dark ambient or just kind of noisy, just experimental noise stuff that they, 
Um, you know, these guys were very young when they started. They were teenagers. Um, some of them are still making music to this day, however, very sparsely. Um, some of it I absolutely love. Some of it I'm not as into. But anyways, I'm kind of ranting about that, and I'm only really showing two releases. But we got uh, two tapes, and they're bootlegs. Like I said, 99% of anything that anyone has from you know the Black Legion's projects are bootlegs. Um, they these guys originally they only made you know tapes and CDRs for for themselves and small circles of friends. It was never meant to get out to the public. So these <laughs> these guys would not approve of me having these bootlegs. However, um, however I have them and I'm going to show them because I have them. Um, I have Lord Akon Kitra. This is it's going to be. Shit, I don't even remember what this one's called. It's just a, uh, it's just a plain <laughs> Xeroxed J card. Um, this is just some crazy, weird, kind of uh, dark ambient noise, black metal inspired stuff. Uh, not something I'd listen to every day, but it's cool as fuck for what it is. Um, like I said, very Abruptum-esque in execution. This is Akon Kitra, Journey to the Depths of Night. A little bit more going on with this J-card, but still it's just a Xerox uh, black and white computer paper. Just absolutely fucked up stuff. Um, <laughs> that it was only, other than Abruptum, you know, this kind of stuff was only coming out of France uh, around this time. Um, just disgusting, tormented very very dark art is, is you know the way you can describe it um, next I got a couple tapes from a uh, very popular Austrian band uh, Abigor I used to have three and I actually lost one of them so um, yeah I used to have Opus 4 which is a fantastic album uh, I don't have that anymore apparently but I've got Noctimmon from the Twilight Kingdom and I've got Orc Blute the Retaliation which was an EP. Now, this was put out, uh, these were both put out by, and they, they put out some more too, but I don't have them. They were put out by a label called Division Nordwolf. Um, they sound fine and everything. They look okay. I don't know why they, you know, probably just funding reasons or whatever, but they, um, they, they only made one cover for all these. The J cards on the inside are different, but they, uh, they put the same cover on every every single tape for some reason. Uh, the Orc Blue tape looks like this on the inside. So, look, you know, it's a, de it's a decent presentation other than the front being the same. Um, I don't know, maybe they were originally released as a set and it, they were supposed to look uniform. I don't remember. The Noctin and tape. Um, I do absolutely love early Abigor. You know, I always kind of thought they had their... They really had their own formula, you know, of, of, of very well-played, melodic black metal. Um, a lot of people love them. They're, they're super well-known and, and really popular, and I think they deserve all the notoriety that they've gotten. And I wish I had more stuff. I do have some more stuff from them on CD. But I don't have all their material. They have some early shit that I absolutely need, and I just don't have yet. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, this tape I picked up a couple years back, and I haven't spent a lot of time with it, and that needs to change because it, this is a pretty unique and just cool-sounding black metal release. Um, the band is called Absolutus. It is a Belgian black metal band. I won't pronounce the... or I won't attempt to pronounce the title because it's uh, it's out of my league um, this came out on Dismal Cursings which is I believe a label out of, I think it's a Belgium, Belgian label um, I know I wasn't going to, I said I wasn't going to show dub tapes but whatever, it's just a black dub tape quite a plain J card and really hard to see, it's black on black but, but uh, this is a band I'm surprised I don't hear more people talk about um, I know there's people that would absolutely probably dig the hell out of this, um, but
but you know maybe aren't aren't familiar if you're into like blue dust nord and stuff like that that more you know weird and experimental black metal um look into absolutists like i said i'm surprised i don't hear more people talk about them but uh it's quality stuff um i can't i can't elaborate a lot on that release because I, I really haven't spent a lot of time with it but it's it's very unique it's it's not your run of the mill black metal at all, and if you're into you know the more experimental side of black metal, like I said, Blue Dos Nord, <clears throat> definitely look in Absolutist. Let me know what you think, or if you've heard the band at all, let me know what you think. You probably are more qualified to talk about them uh, than I am. Now these last four tapes I'm going to show um, are from, from one of my favorite uh, death metal bands out of the out of the U.S. We got Asheron. Started off in uh, Florida. Later on, uh, relocating to Ohio, and they've actually de uh, <laughs> debanded, disbanded um, just a couple years ago. They've broken up before and came back, so I, 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 I who knows? They could come back someday. Um, it's it's been a band that's always been kind of cursed in a way. Um, they've got, they've kind of had a lot of bad, just a lot of bad luck in their career. But like I said, one of my favorite death metal bands. Um, a bit underrated, even. This is a uh, this is an earlier EP, Satanic Victory. These are all, by the way, these are all Nightbirds Records releases. Uh, Nightbirds is a label out of I think Ukraine. Um, very prolific tape label. I mean, they just crank out releases um, like it's nobody's business. Uh, I, I don't think their releases always look great. Sometimes they look better. You know, some some releases look better than others. Um, they've all sounded decent to me, so I mean, I guess that's what really matters. But I think sometimes their presentation could be a little better. Um, and, you know, that goes with these Asheron releases. They're, you know, the, the J-cards are not, you know, they, they could look better, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. They sound fine to me, and, you know, that's what really matters. So, the, like I said, this is an earlier EP. Some of these songs, I believe, are from their first album as well, so... This is not, you know, if you're an Asheron fan, this isn't a mandatory release to have in your collection, but uh, if you're a completist, then yes, it, it, it probably would be. Um, my personal favorite Asheron album right here, I have this on CD. I've had it on CD for years, but we got Anti-God, Anti-Christ. I think this came out in like 96 or 97 originally, if I remember correctly. I'm terrible with dates. I'd love to make, if I can flatten this, I'd love to make a uh, print of that. That's pretty badass, that goat there. Um, yeah, this is just great. This is, uh, you know, dark death metal, dark satanic death metal with, with, uh, with keyboards. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little keyboardy, but not, not overly uh, kind of giving it a, a little bit of a black metal feel. I absolutely love this album. I don't know if I if I actually consider it their best album, but it's it's my favorite of theirs. It's the one that I've listened to the most. Uh, and these next two are damn good. Um, I think these are these next two, especially this one right here. I mean, this might be their best album. Those who have risen. On a technical level, I mean, this album is just absolutely fantastic. It's so dark. Um, this, you know, the early to mid era of this band, like I said, I, you know, I consider it death metal, but I think there's definite black metal influences. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it's, it's, some people consider it like, some people will call Ashram like black death metal. I don't really consider them that. I just consider them death metal, but I mean, I think these guys were listening to black metal and I think it seeped in to their songwriting a little bit. That's how I've always interpreted the band, but, uh. And I don't remember when this one, you know, originally came out. I think this is probably late 90s on this one. Don't quote me. As much as I love this band, I'm just, like I said, I am absolutely terrible with dates. And I had forgotten, actually, until just now, um, I forgot that Tony Loreno played drums on this album. Uh, Tony Loreno is an absolute amazing drummer. He's, you're probably familiar with shit that he's done. He's played in Nile. He's played in Demi Borger. Um, he's done a lot of shit and he's just, he's one of the best drummers out there. Um, I know he's done a lot of studio work. I don't know if he was ever in this band. I think he might've just played on the album, but, uh, I'm not sure about that. And this, this right here, I think this is, 
again, don't, <laughs> don't quote me, this might be the second full length. Um, so when it came out in the early 90s, uh, Lex Talionis. Also one of their best releases. Their first two or three albums, well, I would say their first two albums are, are fairly similar. They're a little bit more, a little bit more straightforward, um, you know, straightforward sounding death metal. Um, they were kind of known for having, and a lot of people find it annoying, but I actually kind of like it. Their first two albums, first two or three, I think just two, they had in between each song, they had like a spoken word intro, like stuff, spoken word stuff from like the, uh, from the Satanic Bible and stuff like that. Um, this band was very, very known for having, um, you know, the, uh, the main guy, Vincent Crowley was a, he was a priest in the, uh, satanic, or not satanic temple, but church of Satan. There was no satanic temple back then, but, uh, yeah, he, he, he was close to Anton LaVey and he was, yeah, he was like a high priest in the church of Satan. Um, and yeah, he's, he's no longer a member, but, uh, but anyways, so yeah, they would have this cool, like spoken word, you know, in between, basically interludes, you know, where they, where they would, uh, <clears throat> you know, read stuff out of the, uh, the satanic Bible. And I was, I always thought it was really cool and unique because nobody else was doing that. But I've heard a lot of people, it's been actually a pretty common complaint. Like a lot of people are like, dude, I, I always skip those tracks and I get that. Um, but for me, it just adds a, it adds a really cool touch to their albums and it's, and it's unique. Not everyone was doing that back then. I also forgot that, uh, Mike Browning from Nocturnus plays drums on this album. And Vincent Crowley was actually a, he was an actually, he was an original member of Nocturnus. He played uh, guitar, I think on their first demo. I think just their first demo, but yeah, he was an original member of Nocturnus. Kind of a little fun fact, a lot of people either I, I don't know about that or you don't hear, you know, people talk about it. Anyways, that's 10 tapes. Um, that's all I'm going to show for now. I hope you guys are doing well. It's Saturday here. Um, my area, you know, I live in the Pacific Northwest and pretty much the whole West coast right now is on fire. Um, it is fucking gross. It's smoky outside. It's super nasty. Um, uh, so if you, any of you guys live on the West coast, uh, yeah. What's it like over there, man? I know California's on fire. Washington's on fire. Um, it's not uncommon for us the last like five summers or so. It's just been fucking just nothing but forest fires. It's fucking bizarre, but, uh. This year has sucked in all in all possible ways. So I, it's just you know, it's just a very thin icing on the fucking cake. So, anyways, yeah. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Talk to me. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're listening to. Um, talk to me about. Uh, have you heard Asheron? Have you heard Absolutus? Uh, what about Black Legions? You know any of the Black Legion stuff like uh, Akon Kitra or what have you? Other than that, Louis says hello. He's right here. And thanks for stopping by. We'll talk soon. Cheers.